Welcome everybody out there here to our next uh, webinar at uh, JFT Bank. Uh, my name is Stefan Fortechowski, as always, for those uh, webinars. And um, since not only since my last name is that complicated, just call me Stefan. Uh, whenever you get in touch with me, you send me an email or dropping me a note, whatever. Um, that's uh, the easiest way. So just Stefan. Today we have the 27th of uh, June, 2000. 17, no, 19, oh, um, that would be cool, two years ago, no, uh, and we have uh, seven o'clock at least uh, in German time or Central Eastern summer time. Did I mention one will come in the name of JFD as well? Hopefully, at least now it's set, absolutely. So, um, Today's webinar is about edges by indicators. That needs a lot of explanation, and uh, it's indeed a quite interesting topic. And let me let me start already in a way to say, yes, finally on my last pages there will be settings like uh, best would be to use slope EMA or regression line with a period of something uh, for a specific uh, underlying. Okay, that's nice. But what is at least for me much more important, how to derive those kind of um, suggestions or statements. So about periods, about what kind of indicator best suited for a specific underlying. So the topic today is not really meant just for the final statement, which one for what. No, it's the how to, how to derive. So as always, um, you know that I'm not uh, just uh, presenting um, fixed solutions or, uh, no, it's always of how to to get those. And I even go a step further. Uh, I give you some tools that you can do the same job than I did uh, by your own. And then you can investigate uh, things by your own as well. So that's the kind of webinars I always do. It's not just to tell you something about um, predefined settings. Sometimes we go into that direction, but uh, it's there yeah, are more the story behind, which is for me, quite important important, and hopefully for you as well. Okay, that was the one first remark. The, the other one is totally different. Um, sometimes we get questions of how can I find the recordings of those webinars? And it's really easy. You see now I'm here at, um, uh, at Google uh, search and what you need to Google is simply JFD uh, YouTube. And doing so, then you are more or less directly at the JFD YouTube channel. And that's exactly where you find all those uh, webinars. And for example, you see here, Wahrscheinlichkeits Wahrscheinlichkeitsvorteil durch Indikatoren two days ago. That's exactly the same webinar of today, but in German. And if you want to see really all and not grouped in anything, then it's just here, videos, that's uh, the button to be pressed. And finally, and if you are in, an, uh, in another language, then you would have here behind the red button, abonnieren, so you can um, re register. And then you will get notifications if any new recording is uploaded. Okay, that's it. So that's a way of how to find all the recordings of previous webinars. And from uh, tomorrow onwards, uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning, then you will find uh, the recordings of today's webinar as well. You might have already realized that uh, in your go-to webinar control panel, there's one button and I cannot show it because my control panel is always hidden for anybody because um, then you would see some names and of course it's not possible. Uh, anyhow, but in the go to webinar control panel, there's a button that you can download uh, something. And in this case, the something are the slides of today. So there's a PDF document and uh, that you can download, then you have the documents. Later, I will show a couple of Excel sheets. And uh, if you have interest in those, I cannot uh, go the same way here by, by um, with, like with the PDF document, uh, then you unfortunately have to send me an email um, and then I give you a link to those uh, Excel sheets. Um, it's not possible to upload those, only PDF is, um, is allowed for whatever reason, I have no idea. Anyhow, 
Okay, but now there's still something to be done. And all um, of you, you uh, who are more often here with those webinars, you know I have to show at least once that kind of risk disclaimer, uh, telling you that of course we are talking about trading, talking about investment, talking about strategies, whatever. But finally, if you do things for your own, you are doing those things by your own and on your own responsibility, of course. Um, but I think that's quite self-explaining. Anyhow, let me bring you a little bit more into the topic. If you talk about edges by indicators, um, then I have really first to tell you a little bit about, about uh, a little bit more about our target, because just uh, saying edges and then by indicators, um, that's not something everybody would know what I mean. Uh, you might have an idea, but that has to be defined much more precisely um, that we are really talking about the same issue. And therefore, let me give you a little bit of my target description. And of course, I will introduce the kind of indicators I, um, I'm dealing here today, uh, five or six uh, different kind of indicators, all so-called single parameter indicators. And then I will do something which I normally not do. I reduce everything what we are doing here to hit rate. And I will even don't talk about costs of trading, swap costs, commission spreads. And in this case, and it's one of the um, quite rare cases, that this is okay. When we talk about real trading strategies in a way, if something happens like that, then open a trade, stop loss 1% below, blah, blah, blah. Of course, if we try to investigate those kind of strategies, then definitely we have to include the costs. But today is a day of just edge. And for the edge itself, we can stick to hit weight as um, um, one measure for that edge. Of course, I will introduce some Excel sheets for your own in, uh, investigations. And uh, I have prepared, uh, I think, in total six Excel sheets with different indicators. And I will explain a little bit uh, how you would do it if you feed those sheets with new price data of different symbols. Um, so it's uh, quite easy. But then you can do your own investigations as well. Nevertheless, I have done a, a complete and quite comprehensive investigation of all indicators with all different periods, or not all periods, possible periods, but lots of them. And later we'll talk about how far can we look into the future with those indicators and still having an edge. So um, I've done those things with my C++ uh, computer programs uh, to get really the complete picture. Um, that unfortunately I cannot share, but anyhow, I can share the results. And those results, once again, are in some Excel sheets. And you will see that we can draw quite a lot of common conclusions, even over all investigated symbols um, and indicators. So we can really uh, draw some, some common conclusions, which is quite cool that this is possible uh, for that kind of topic. Okay, so my, my target today, so I, what I really would like to achieve here is, well, you see my first line, of course, earning money. Yeah, okay, it, well, that's normal. If you talk about trading, then uh, finally it, uh, the target's goal is earning money. Okay, I think now everybody is smiling and hopefully a little bit, uh, and everybody knows that this is not that easy as it uh, always uh, sounds to be or people are telling oh that's easy uh, to earn money at uh, forex or any other markets no it's a real hard job uh, that i assume you know but nevertheless that's the final goal yeah but that's not a methodology or anything we can just achieve with one single uh, tip no definitely not we have first to differentiate between the two styles of trading. 
One is a discretionary trading, which finally means there's a chart. You are analyzing the chart. You have additional information about region, politics, companies, whatever. And then finally you decide, I go long euro, US dollar, 0.03 lot, stop loss here, take profit there. That is what is called discretionary trading. Or on the other side, the complete opposite side, is those things we are normally talking here about, about trading strategies, algorithmic strategies. So they are really stubborn. So they they do what they should do and you we we, we stick to those rules and nothing else. Okay. That we know. But anyhow, doing discretionary trading or statistical or algorithmic trading, both have one thing in common. If you do a trade, a trade needs an edge. So a real probability advantage. And, and let me turn the, the, that sentence the other way around. And without knowing that there is an edge, no trade. And having maybe that as a, in, in big letters beside your screen sometimes may help you. I know those situations. We are sitting in front of the, the screen looking to some charts and seeing, oh yeah, that looks good. Now it's time to go short on that and the like, and then we open the trade. But honestly, do we know any edge for that trade? It's more a feeling, telling us whatever. And there might be people who are excellent in that thing. And on, honestly, I do not know a single one, but there might be some people around. But it's really important to always keep in mind Without an edge, no trade. It's a simple story. And therefore, today we just focus on edges, nothing else. It's not the complete trading strategy. It's getting that edge, knowing that edge, and how to derive that edge. And of course, as the title of the, today's webinar is, indicators can provide an edge, and they indeed can do. Uh, so that's a good thing. That's the answer beforehand. And of course, we talk about which indicators and how to measure that edge, because we, we need a measurement, otherwise I'm lost here. Finally, it's all about how to implement such an indicator and which one with what kind of settings and what is the amount or how big is that edge. So there's a real measurement behind. Okay, the kind of indicators we will use and investigate um, are here five in total, and I think later I added one additional, but let's see. Um, but let me explain about those indicators. Uh, a few of them are regular indicators uh, out of MT4, or at least modifications of those. But finally, the good thing is you will find them somewhere in the internet. Uh, just Google for something like that, then indicators there are lots of indicators around free for download the first one is momentum um, sometimes um, well i would even prefer um, the naming rate of change because that is what that kind of indicator is doing it's just asking let me there's a candle and later we do everything in h1 um, that h1 candle just closes so there's a close price of that candle. Okay. And now I can ask, what is the percentage change if I look one candle back, two candles back, 10 candles back, 20 candles back, and so on. So that's all. In most cases, um, well, I think uh, the, the, the standard indicator uh, in MT4 is doing that job uh, in, in BIPs or something like that. Um, I prefer percentage, uh, simply because if you look for Dax or Dow Jones or anything, um, yeah, today we have prices of 12,000 12, for, for the Dax. Um, 10 years ago, it might have been 2,000. And therefore, we don't have to do that kind of measurement absolute in percent. In percent. So that's the reason. And even for Forex, we have sometimes a huge deviation um, between low and high over, over 
uh, uh, possible um, lowest numbers and highest numbers in, in forex prices. And then even it's important to go to uh, percentage change. So that's one indicator. That's maybe the simplest one you can think of. Think of. The next one, or the next two ones, are related to an EMA. The first one is distance EMA. That's the way how I call that. And it's really easy to define. You know, we have an EMA. Okay, once again, we have a close uh, of an H1 candle. Then there's, of course, um, a price or a value for the EMA for a given period. And now we simply measure the distance between the close price of the candle to that EMA in percent. That's all. So, <clears throat> of course, the EMA has a period, and I all call uh, every every time I call for any um, indicator, I call it just the period. Um, I know that that naming is more for e valid for EMAs, but we use the same um, name for momentum and all the other ones as well. So that's the distance EMA. We have made strategies already out of that indicator um, called mean reversion strategy. And later we will come back to that a little bit. Third indicator is slope EMA. Slope EMA, yeah, it's exactly uh, what the name is telling you. We measure the slope of an EMA. How to do, it's once again quite simple. We have an actual EMA value and then we have an EMA value one candle before, so the previous EMA uh, value, and um, we just calculate the difference and then divide it by uh, the actual EMA value. So then we have a slope. And uh, that's another good indicator as well, because, you know, sometimes we talk about trends. Uh, so, yeah, then we should have a higher slope, uh, maybe positive for the um, upwards trend or uh, negative for downwards trend. Anyhow, so the slope is a good measurement as well. In principle, we could use the EMA itself as well, but the downside is then we have only two states above the EMA or below. And there's no measurement as well. Therefore, I don't use that one. Uh, we have the distance EMA, of course, and that is uh, the more precise one and better one. So we will not uh, introduce any trading strategy uh, going, um, if the price is above EMA, then go north. No, uh, no definitely those kind of ideas will not uh, be any conclusion of today, but might be valid as well. Uh, Force indicator is just a regression line. Regression line means, yeah, like in Excel, you have a couple of points, uh, data points, and then you, you, you draw a regression line. Even that you can do in MT4 as well. And then we, we take the slope of that regression line as an indicator. Um, it might be a little bit similar to the slope EMA, but as you see, the definition is definitely not the same. Uh, so that means, um, there must be something different. Okay, and finally, we use uh, the RSI, Relative Strengths Indicator. Uh, once again, I just call it period X, and uh, you know that that kind of indicator um, is giving you a number between zero <clears throat> and 100. And normally, that indicator is uh, in interpreted like, if you have quite high values, mm, then it's an over, bought um, environment situation go short and the answer is yeah the principal idea is correct and we will do later everything like that for distance slope regression momentum our first attempt will always be do exactly the opposite so if we have high positive slopes let's look whether with a short trade we have a positive edge and it will turn out in most cases it will be exactly like that okay those are the indicators and um, finally as I mentioned already a little bit we will not execute any real trades not uh, real trades uh, of course not but even not we will not simulate those real trades like in other Excel sheets now our kind of investigation goes the following 
So we have no stop loss, no take profit. So therefore, we have no trades, and no real trades. We asked only one easy and simple question. If we open a trade, oh, we have a close price of given candle. We have a given indicator value right now. And now we would virtually open a trade at the next open of the next candle. Okay. And now we asked after four candles, that will later be, will be the future candles, is the price above our open or below? That's all. We just asked positive or negative. Do we have, so so would a long trade in principle, beside any costs, be positive if that kind of situation? Yes or no? That's all. And would a short trade be positive? The condition is quite easy. So then the close price after Y candles have to be below the open price of our, of our trade. Once again, no costs involved, no spread, nothing. We just talk about hit rates, nothing else. But finally, think about if we find some rules that we have a hit rate a little bit not really far above 50 percent but let's think about 55 percent then we can do some additional easy calculations would that be enough for having a, a finally positive trade the answer would be yes so i can give you the rule of thumb um, you need about a 52 percent uh, hit rate for a trade with risk reward ratio of one to one that you are um, at, let's say, break even, including costs, then you need 52%. Without costs, of course, then 50.01% would be already <clears throat> enough um, to, to be above break even, but including costs, it's uh, as a rule of thumb, it's about 52%. Then uh, you, you can have positive trades for risk reward ratios of exactly one to one. So once again, we just consider edges, nothing more. Okay, let's do it practically. And now I go to Excel sheets and uh, let me start with uh, the maybe a little bit more complicated even. And unfortunately, sometimes it will take some time. And um, at least for this Excel sheet here, I will not change any number because um, it's uh, 20, 28 uh, megabytes. Um, and uh, just let me explain how that Excel sheet is working and uh, what are the places to change anything so that you can do everything by your own as well. So let me start with, which is quite easy. Um, first of all, what you can see is that there are price data. And of course, uh, those price, price data like date and time, and I have added those two up just to have um, the potential graph uh, having a, a real time. And then we have the four values, open, high, low, close of, uh, of any candle. And uh, in this case, it's H1 base and uh, the underlying is Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Good. Then definitely you know how to change, download somewhere else, price data, uh, and then uh, you can exchange those. Good. You see already what's in here. RSI period, uh, 128. And now we have to, to consider two things. One is, okay, how to calculate RSI? Mm, that you can Google. It's uh, not a big deal. We need up candles and down candles and then uh, building a kind of proportion of those that you will find any anywhere in the internet. But technically in an Excel sheet we have another problem and let me let me go into that a little bit more in detail. Of course we have needed a period and I go, go down here uh, already to where we try uh, where we start calculation. And if you have an RSI period 128, normally what we, have, what we do is we build an average over the last 128 values. Okay, I could do that, but how to change the period? 
manually, then I have to really change uh, the average starting and end index. Hmm. That's not cool. Uh, I want to change just the number and then everything else uh, should be done. And exactly that is uh, that Excel stream is doing that kind of job. How to do that? You see already a little bit if you look into that cell and what is in there. There's an average starting end, that's easy as always, but the start and the end index um, is indirect. That's a trick. Um, I always, if you ask me to write down that uh, formula just uh, out of my head, it would be a disaster. But uh, I have always to Google that. But once I have it, then we can do it. And now you see what I have done. I have two columns here, and I call they are just uh, assistance columns, so to say. So the one here is at 525, and just counting by one. And the other one is exactly the 128 below, plus one. And so that are the boundaries for our calculation. And that is exactly what we get here if we do it with that uh, command indirect. Okay, I know it's a little bit technically, but that's a trick. And that's a really cool trick to have, um, once again, in indicators like RSI or even um, SMAs or anything which is not like an EMA um, to do that job uh, by changing one cell. So that's the way we do it. Okay, you got it. But now it's time to go, to go for the edge. So we have calculated our RSI value, which is in this case starting here with 47.47. Um, .47. And um, the reason why the, the, the space above is empty, yeah, we look into the history and um, if you would change that indicator even now for 1000, it would not uh, fit. Uh, therefore, I start here uh, below at uh, 525 anyhow. So that's the value of our indicator. And now we simply do the following. We ask ourselves, is the actual indicator above a certain threshold, that's the other yellow cell here, above a certain threshold. If so, we would think about a long, uh, short trade, sorry for that. And if the indicator would be below the other cell here, which is just the first one, so uh, 100 minus the first one, so symmetrical boundaries for this RSI, um, consideration for trades. If we would be below that threshold, of course, then we would virtually open a long trade. Okay, let me go to a place where that condition is fulfilled. Here, first time. Let me go here. And we see that is a condition we are below the second threshold, therefore we think about a long trade, therefore long. And now let me check what I have done here. You see prediction one, that's the name of that column. So, and what I simply do here is, I go into the next line, into the next row, and then, yeah, um, subtract that value minus that one here, uh, times the sign, because it's a long trade, uh, and then finally I get a sign. So in this case, the, the prediction going long with one candle trade duration, so to say, uh, would be minus, meaning wrong. So we would have been on the wrong side. And next to the right, we do it similar, but now with two candles, total trade duration. And next, four candles trade duration. So the question is, could we predict in majority four candles from now with the right sign going up or going now? So that's all. That's the question. That's the, the final question of our edge. Is our prediction eight candles into the future right in majority? Yes or no? And that's what, I, what we are doing here. 
Okay, and now let's look to the results because we have seen them already in the graph. And the answer you have seen was, oh yeah, we are right. So with that kind of period, that kind of threshold, and we can change uh, those numbers. And uh, I will do it in the next uh, Excel sheet uh, with another indicator. This one is a, uh, this Excel sheet is a little bit longer because I have done some, I call them pseudo equity lines here as well. Here you can see our prediction versus time. If we would uh, call a positive hit like a trade with plus one and a negative one with minus one, uh, then you have even something which is close to an equity, just for illustration purpose here. But finally, what we have in the, the, the upper graph here is that even for, for looking 128 candles into the future, we have an edge of 6%. So 50, uh, 56% is our hit rate. Hey, that's cool. So we know, and we have real statistics here behind, uh, that Excel sheet has H1 data in it. So it's about 80,000 uh, rows or candles. So it's real statistics behind. And that's what I want to achieve here, to have a statistical significant statement. And you see, we have that kind of edge, perfect. And now we could change those numbers. But before changing those numbers, let me explain just at one another example, um, um, another indicator. And then I, here I go for the distance EMA. It looks the behavior a little bit similar. Uh, in this case, I have the same period, 128. And of course, I need a threshold. And that threshold is meant, once again, if we are with our distance EMA above that threshold, we would go short. And you see, once again, we have quite good hit rate, far above 50%. You may think 80% hmm, would be better if you are right, but we will never get a hit rate for something with, which is normally 50-50, uh, like 80%, because yeah, that would be cool, but um, I think we cannot achieve something like that. But at least if we have numbers, as I mentioned, above 52%, uh, hey, that we can use for trading as well. It means we have an edge, which finally might be possible to transfer in a, into a positive trade. We need other things for that trade, but we need the, the first input, and that's exactly that edge. And what we could do here is we could change the threshold. In this case, I have uh, connected it to the maximum value. Uh, and if you see, if I go down uh, a little bit, uh, so with, a, uh, with another threshold, uh, with a, a lower number, then the total number of pseudo trades is increased. Formerly, it has been about 10,000 because that was always my target value, looking for 10,000 pseudo trades in within 80,000 data points. So that was my, 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 my target here. And we still have a positive edge and that's what we want to achieve. But now you could even play around other symbols, other thresholds, other indicator values. Good. So that's a, the job you can do if you would like uh, with those kind of Excel sheets by your own and just send me an email and I will at least, uh, I will uh, send you a link to those um, um, indicators. I have some more um, are prepared as on my first slide. Uh, so there are others like momentum, regression and so on. And you can have those as well. Okay. Um, but now we want to go to our comprehensive analysis. Let me explain what I have done so that we get real statements for today here. What I have done for the complete analysis, okay, uh, I have not done it with Excel because it would uh, take too long time for doing everything for, any sim for every symbol and really a couple of different periods of indicators and a couple of different future candles, so to say. So the, 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 the time duration of such a potential trade. So that what I've done is I investigated uh, indicator periods starting at four 
ending at 512 always by doubling and future candles and now I have to apologize a little bit because now I'm starting with future candle zero going up to 128 the reason is the following um, within the Excel sheet I, I explained a minute ago um, the first we can do is we could virtually open a trade at the next open of the candle and close that trade at the close of that candle and in the previous Excel sheet, I called that duration one. It would be, well, it is better to call that duration zero because it's the same line, it's the same uh, column, uh, the same row. And if you are a little bit familiar with with programs, then you think about index. And yeah, of course, then it's a zero. So what previously has been trade duration of one is now trade duration of zero, both. Um, meaning the same, just that for your information. So, and I did one thing a little bit different because I want to, to be a little bit more flexible. Within the previous Excel sheet, I have had thresholds for longs, thresholds for short trades, and I put those uh, symmetrically. But I, I do not know anything about those values in between. Now I do it in a way that I use eight groups think about you have an indicator rsi okay we know that that value can be between zero and 100 but now thinking about eight groups one possibility might be okay we have the group zero until 12.5 12.5 until 24 uh, 25 25 until 37.5 and so on and so forth. So then we have eight groups. Uh, then those eight groups would be equidistant in indicator value. I did it a little bit different. I have asked myself, hey, I want to have eight groups and the, the, the um, Borner values, um, they should be in a way that every group contains the same amount of traits. So they are equally distributed nevertheless i call them later group zero up to the group seven and the group zero would be always the, at the lower, lower end and seven would be the one at the upper end so the extreme values and we will see that those kind of groups are the most important one for our edge because there we have in most cases the best edge is a group zero and the group seven, which means if indicators go to an extreme value and extreme uh, means 12.5% uh, of all trades, then we have an edge and we can use that edge for our trading. That's cool. And I, but I investigated all the other groups in between as well. So it's uh, not a big deal if you start that by coding. Okay, let me now guide you a little bit through Excel sheets, which finally um, uh, describe the overall output of that investigation. And uh, I have to start with that one. And from one to the next one, we will now try to derive conclusions. And later you will see there's a really comprehensive uh, list. Let me explain this one because later you might even look into that Excel sheet at a specific line because you get curious and interested in, in, in those values. Let me start with the first eight lines of that Excel sheet. Okay, what can we see? Symbol. Finally, the complete Excel sheet has all the symbols. 28 Forex pairs plus gold plus DAX plus uh, S&P 500. Everything has been analyzed. But now let's look for the third eight, line, eight lines. It's Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. The indicator used is curvature. Okay, that was the one I added additionally. Curvature means second derivative. So we I, I calculated the slope and then the slope of the slope, which finally means if the slope of an EMA is even increasing from one candle to the other, ooh, that looks like an explosion. Uh, that's good. We have all the other indicators as well. Anyhow, third eight lines. So we have the eight groups, the limits of those groups, and then we have the hit rate within that group for short rate. 
just considering short, nothing else. Therefore, uh, column E is a minus one, short weights. Let me plot those eight values. How to interpre interpret those eight values? It's really easy. It means, unfortunately, Excel is um, doing the number one once again here, where I mean uh, uh, zero. In the lower group, so that means the indicator has the lowest values. A short trade would be not a good idea. The hit rate would be 46%. And you see, if I go along my groups up to group number seven, that's the way I call that group. So if we have high values of that indicator and still think about distance EMA or momentum, then you're always directed the right, uh, the, the right page. If you have quite high values, so that normally would mean, oh, slope is increasing. Great, let's go long. Wrong. We should go short. So if we are exactly there, then we have with short trades a hit rate of 43%. Cool. So, but that's only one conclusion for one period and nothing else. So the period here in this case is four. But I have done this for, yeah, you see how many lines are within the Excel sheet, 200,000, um, 14, 214,000 lines, which means different indicator values, different kind of indicators, and always calculating the hit rate for a specific group. Hey, that's cool. We have all the numbers in one table. And now what I've done is I first asked, hey, please tell me the best group per given indicator and um, um, period and future candles, because we can do the same analysis. Uh, the one we have done here uh, with one future candle, two future candles, and so on. Okay, cool. Give me the best values. I have done that job already. Then the Excel sheet is already much smaller, only 26,000 um, uh, rows. But now within the first row, what we know now is the for curvature, the indicator curvature with a period of four for future candle zero, which means just one candle, the best group is a seven, so the highest one to the extreme, and then exactly what we have seen in my previous chart. And now we could do the same for looking one candle into the future, two candles into the future, up to 128 candles into the future. Okay, we see sometimes the numbers of which group is best changed. We see numbers like six, or even here we have uh, um, the group number two. But majority for short trades, it's always a seven. But let's try to go into that much more. Let me try to answer now different kind of questions. So I can try to answer the question, which indicator is the best at all? If I just compare indicators for everything, including all kind of periods I investigate, all kind of um, future uh, candles, and let me just give you the answer, and you, you can do the same by your own, I know that. Uh, that's not a big deal in Excel, you just have to, to sort uh, the data according to some numbers and then adding up those numbers. And I will not go into the details, but what we have within, within that line here, that's the second indicator, and if you turn down here that Excel sheet, you will see the second indicator in my Excel sheet is a distance EMA. So. And here's the conclusion. So the best indicator, if we go over all investigated symbols, would be distance EMA. Okay, 
That's a cool conclusion. And the other cool conclusion is the other indicators are behaving more or less the same. So the difference between the different indicators phew, is really small. That shows you a little other story. Um, you you know there might be webinars around. People are going to specific indicators and think, ah, this one is uh, the best at all. Yeah, I now call distance EMA the best, yes. But I know that the difference to all the other ones are extremely small. Statistically, about, but, but now think about our, our statistical base here. We have 31 different symbols with more than 80,000 candles. And we have investigated lots of indicators, lots of periods, and a lot of future candles. And we can draw one conclusion. Wow. Let me draw another conclusion. Um, I can ask for what is the best um, period going looking into the future. So, uh, how many future candles? Uh, and what? What? Sorry, uh, I stop the sentence once again. What is the best indicator period using for for everything here? If I go over all my different symbols, here's the answer. It's the longest one. 512. So let's call it 500. So an in, using an indicator with a long period, not too long because then it's getting meaningless. Um, that's exactly where we should look for edges. That we have an edge is already proven here within that Excel sheet. Okay, so that's the best indicator going for not too small um, uh, periods. And once again, that conclusion is based on on uh, nearly a million of, of 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 candles, so that is statistical significant. And now I can ask the question: um, Yeah, what is how far I can look into the future best? And once again, here's, uh, the differences are not that huge. So the best one at all would be just looking for the next candle. So just one candle. Um, but all the others are not that bad as well. We have still good statistical edges. The differences, look to the scale here, uh, are really quite small. Oh, unfortunately, that is in German, genau die nächste. So that means um, the, uh, just the next candle. <clears throat> I can ask another question, and it's always only sorting those uh, data uh, and, and then grouping them. I can ask, which is the best symbol, which is most predictable, so to say, um, in, in, in terms of indicators? Okay, let me go directly to the summary. So the, 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 the one we can predict the best is Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, and worse, Euro, Japanese yen. Okay, let me look a little bit more at the beginning of that list. So Australian dollar, Canadian dollar might not be on, 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 on your trading list uh, if you normally look for trades. Uh, this SPX USD, that is the S&P 500, well, that might be on your list. Euro, Swiss franc is the third one. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, the next one. Quite interesting. So that's a hit list along um, uh, along what what symbol uh, could be predicted best. And before I go to to um, the final page, let me try to explain you a little bit about that kind of picture here. Um, now I have asked the question. What group, do you remember, group zero and group seven are the extremes? And I indicated already that always the lowest group should be traded long and the highest group short. Think about RSIs. That's now illustrated why, why are that strange line here. I have sorted. Uh, all the, the 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 numbers according to the group. 
that's what you can see here and now i looked what is good long or short and that is uh, the moving average within that line i know that's a little bit sophisticated as a kind of analysis but you you may get get it already that going to the extreme values those um the both extremes close to zero and close to seven so always when we are um, at extreme values of our indicators that's where we have the best edge finally of course i can um, go for uh, the best symbol we have had that let me check group groups no uh, ah now i have it sorry for for the small delay now i have asked myself okay i want to look four candles into the future why four now four is four hours if i do trades intraday four hours is not that far so within four hours my trade should be finally done okay if i just restrict myself to looking four candles into the future then i ask myself which indicator i should use and which group and which period of the indicator i should use and now i know that that um, the most is hidden behind my two graphs but i could um, point them out uh, a little bit but now i just want to give you a hint of what's within that table so let me start with australian dollar new zealand dollar so if i want to trade that on a time horizon of four hours then the best indicator i should use is distance ema with a period of eight and if i want to go for short trades of course it should be in group seven and the, the limits for that group are even listed here as well the good thing is we do you don't need them really mathematically i have them here that's good to know but seeing realizing those extremes within the chart you can do just by your eyes always when something goes into the extreme so very fast movements hey that's a signal for doing a trade to the opposite but we have it mathematically here and um, in most cases it's exactly that for for short trades it's always this group seven that's what you can see within the lower graph here we have all the symbols the first 31 is everything investigated with short trades the second 31 here is everything investigated with long trades there's one real big exception which is here behind 33 and i can tell you what that kind of exception is it's a dux there's one duck uh, exception and the, the best indicator to trade the ducks would be the momentum yeah period eight yeah but once again even for long trades group seven which means so if the ducks is really already starting going north then you can jump on that train but that's the only where you can do that you can see that visually that we don't have any other uh, high number within the second half of that graph because there we have all the long trades that's the only exception but you see that looking from a more distant point of view to everything what i presented here today we can we can go for some common conclusions and it's really that easy and nevertheless you see we can have significant edges before i go to the to the, to the other graph um, you can see that we can have significant edges above 52 percent which goes into the direction that we can um, even live with the costs of trading um, finally that's good enough 
so we 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 have a lot of symbols a lot of indicators uh, which prove to to be uh, that uh, significant but now it's time to go for those conclusions and i have summarized a few of them but nevertheless you can have the complete picture like the like uh, the recipe on on the last uh, excel sheet uh, slide with all the numbers best indicators per symbol uh, and everything no problem you, if you like you can add so conclusions or findings here are really easy okay best indicator distance ema mm, uh, but knowing that the other ones are not really that worse so it's not re finally a matter of what indicator we take but what we learned is that what i call counter trading is much better than follow trading what i mean with that one with the exception ducks and i we talk about that normally it's not a good idea to jump on a train here when it comes to trading so if something is already going north then jumping on that with a long trade is statistically not the best idea. You have always to keep in mind, of course, there might be situations where that is a brilliant solution, the best trade ever. But we are talking statistically and we are talking about millions of, of uh, data. So counter trading, doing the opposite, especially if something goes rapidly north then going short that's a bad idea so that's what i mean with counter trading um, so it means if the price is deviating far to the north then short trades are the best to do and vice versa what is mathematically mean meant with huge deviations okay Within the Excel sheets, you find even the boundary numbers. But still, I strongly believe that with some experience to charts, and everybody of you have those experience, you will find those opportunities directly in the chart as well. Whenever you have those um, extreme indicator values, even without that indicator, you, you, you will realize them within the chart. What I want to achieve here was to find an enrichment for discretionary trading. It's not that I say, okay, we have a new algorithm going for indicator distance EMA period eight. Whenever we are in group seven, we open uh, a short trade and uh, with 0.01 lot stop loss here, take profit there. No, that wasn't the idea. It was one step previous and that you can use even if you do discretionary trading let's use that as an edge because it is an edge and everything which helps you from getting better from 50 50 and that's exactly what i presented here helps you to have better trades and better final results so even for pure discretionary trading you can use those simple rules directly if you like okay you know normally i have one last slide which is always uh, titled in a nutshell in this case see last slide it was exactly uh, the the nutshell of my 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 overall conclusions but i want to repeat one for me, the most important sentence about trading. Edges are the base for, should be the base for any trading activity. Just uh, listening to somebody, mm, whenever the price hits the EMA 40, then you should do that. That's one question you should ask. Why? Do you have a proof? Can you prove it statistically? Or is it just gut feeling and nothing else normally the people will answer oh yeah that's my experience hmm. okay i would accept that sentence if that guy is 
showing me his track record of his account for the last 10 years, and that track record is positive. Still, I have to believe that he has used exactly those kind of, of experience within that track record. Okay. But otherwise, why should I believe anything, just anybody just telling something? So we need a statistical proof match. And without having an edge, however we get it, that should be the base for any trading activity. Still, and I always put that sentence additionally next line. Beside, you have a really a blessed gut feeling for trading that you have feeling it goes north, it goes south, like like maybe somebody ride, riding waves on a surfboard. Uh, who has a good feeling for that? Yeah, maybe, but it's not my style. Okay, finally it means, I hope you have learned a little bit and that you see that not only talking about edges, talking about how to derive edges is even more important and then getting those kind of conclusions and I hope that will help you as well. If you have interest in anything else, just uh, or just getting in touch with me, you see once again my email address here, or you have already downloaded the slides and you have the email uh, as well. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Next month, um, we have a, the next one, of course. I can tell you a little bit already about the topic. Then we talk about swap profits. So it's a little bit about swap hunting and how to do that and what's really the story behind um, to, to use uh, swaps as an edge. You normally think I have to pay. Yeah, not for every symbol. Let's see. That will be um, next uh, month's webinar in July. It's already maybe, oh, I'm not sure. It's, it should be already on the web page, but anyhow, you will get an email or you, you will find your way to that webinar hopefully okay that's for now enjoy the evening and um, thanks for being here it was quite international i can see from the names but uh, it's good to have you there okay bye bye and have a good time